Okay, welcome back, and today we're going to be doing our lab on the production of hydrogen gas and the standard test to see if you've produced it. Um, what we're looking at today is we're looking at an introduction to chemical equations and how to balance them. Now, today we're going to be using a metallic element. This would be magnesium, and we're going to combine it with a solution, hydrochloric acid, which is consisting primarily of hydrogen and chlorine they're going to undergo a chemical reaction. In a chemical reaction, the reactants, the substances that you use to make the reaction occur, they will come apart. So the hydrogen and chlorine will break their bond, and what happens is they reassemble themselves and give off energy. So what's going to happen is the hydrogen is going to break away from the chlorine and join up with another hydrogen, and the magnesium is then going to join up with the chlorine, and one magnesium always joins with two. So for those of you who are particularly bright, which should be all of you, you can see a problem. You see, on one side of the equation, we've got one magnesium, one hydrogen, and one chlorine. On the other side of the equation, we have two magnesiums and two chlorines. Now, during a chemical reaction, you cannot create matter. Things cannot actually just pop out of nowhere. So what we have to do is we have to balance that chemical equation. So let me show you how we do that, and then we'll actually show you how the reaction occurs. So these equations describe actual chemical reactions and tell us how much stuff it took to start it and how much stuff was produced by in our products, so reactants and products. So here's what we'll need to do. Let's see. We've got to get one more hydrogen on this side. But the only way hydrogen exists on the left side is when it's bonded with a chlorine. So I can't just put a single hydrogen over here. So let me find another chlorine. Here we go. And we're going to put a chlorine there. And then they are chemically connected. That's what we call a chemical bond. So we'll draw a bond in there like that. And what we see now is on this side of the reaction, we have one magnesium atom reacts with two hydrochlorine molecules. Each of these is a molecule of hydrochloric acid, producing one molecule of hydrogen gas and one molecule of magnesium chloride, which is a salt. Now, let's look at our numbers. Now we see one, one magnesium, two, 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 two hydrogens, and two, 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 two chlorines. This is what we call a balanced chemical equation. We have one more thing to do, where now we say, okay, one of these molecules combines with two of these molecules to produce one of those molecules and one of those molecules. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a balanced chemical equation. That's what we're going to be learning to do over the next couple of days. And that describes the reaction that you're going to see. All right, now we're going to carry out the actual reaction we just described. In the first step, you need to measure up 0.3 grams of magnesium metal. Now we're talking 0.3 three grams. We're talking three of the tiny lines, and if you can't remember this, then please refer to the instructions on the cork strip. What you need to do first off is you need to balance your balance, and we have the weigh boat on the left hand side, and we set the balance and see how much the weigh boat weighs. And in this case it weighs 2.1 grams. Now we need three tenths of a gram, not three grams, three tenths. A tenth of a gram are these teeny tiny little lines that are after the gram numbers. So I'm at 2.1, now I'm at 2.2, 2.3, 2.4. So I went from 2.1 to 2.4, I added 3 tenths of a gram. We're talking small amounts because we don't want the reaction to get out of control here. So what you do is you set your scale to what you want. You then very carefully, like sprinkling in a little bit of pepper or other lovely cooking spices, add a small amount of magnesium until the balance balances again. And we had to have added three-tenths of a gram to bring it back into balance. We're talking about that much stuff. Okay, so if you have a big heaping pile, you'll know you added three grams, not three-tenths of a gram, and that would be bad. All right, so that's the first. All right, now in the next step, we need to make sure our safety glasses are on because now we get into the danger part of this lab. In our flask we have hydrochloric acid, very strong, and we just keep this cup on top of it to keep from having the fumes escape. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to take that off and put the funnel on top and get things set up. All right. So we're going to have to adjust it so that when we put the magnesium in the acid and the reaction begins, we will set the funnel on top, slide it under the test tube, and then lower the test tube down so that it is collecting the hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas is even lighter than helium gas. Hydrogen gas floats up, 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 up. So make sure that you have a little gap under here. See how I can slide it under there like that? as the reaction is occurring so that the heavier air in the test tube can be pushed out and escape as the lighter hydrogen gas goes up and collects at the top of the test tube. And so you're going to have to not work in a frantic pace, but you're going to have to make sure this happens rather quickly so that you can collect your hydrogen gas. So let me show you how that reaction will occur. So you set everything up so you're ready to go. Just adjust your test tube so it's just a little bit higher, so you're going to slide this under and then lower it down. So here's what will happen. We will pour our magnesium into our flask. Chemical reaction occurs. We slide under there. We lower the test tube down. We make sure there's an airspace at the bottom, and we've been get, we begin collecting the gas. Now you can see a chemical reaction occurring here. It's actually producing heat. You can feel the warmth. And this is what's going on when we described our reaction. The magnesium is combining with the hydrochloric acid to form hydrogen gas, which is floating up, 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 up. And magnesium chloride, which is dissolved in the solution. Now, once the reaction is done, that's when the fizzing stops, we will then test to see if hydrogen gas actually was produced. So we're basically testing your ability to carry out a chemical reaction. Okay. So, looks to me like our fizzing has stopped. You can see some, ga or some uh, condensation up here from the heat, some of the water vapor uh, that was present. The hydrochloric acid dissolved in water vapor it was there. So what you'll do now is you very, very carefully slide your test tube up so we can get access to it. We slide it up about that high. Now notice, we are not in any way, shape, or form touching the test tube or allowing it to turn over. If that would turn over, then the gas would escape. All right, then we just kind of slide that to the side, and now we do the standard test for hydrogen gas, and this is where I come in. When you think you're ready, I will come around, and I will very simply say, okay, you're ready to test for hydrogen to see if you produced it? And you'll say, yes, I am. So we will have you hold a splint. We will light a wooden splint. Remember, fire burns up. So we hold it like that so that it gets a good flame going. And then you will very quickly put it up in the test tube. And what will happen is we'll get a miniature explosion. Now, what you heard was a squeaking, whistling noise. Now, when the Hindenburg, the uh, famous dirigible or blimp, exploded uh, right around the time of World War I, just before it, what happened was uh, it was full of hydrogen gas because it was so light it held it up. It exploded, so multiply that teeny explosion by about a million, and you'll get what happened. Now, that <clears throat> if you can get that squeaking noise, that little explosion, then we know you, in fact, carried out your chemical procedure and your measurements right. Now, I need you to do one more thing when you're done. Turn the test tube right side up. Okay, so we turn the test tube right side up. And now we will see that there is condensation. You also made a little bit of water in there. When we had that chemical reaction, when hydrogen reacted with oxygen, it produced H2O or water vapor. Now we gotta get that out of there. So please, what I need you to do is real simple. Take a dry piece of tree bark or paper towel rather, wrap it up and just put it in there and twist it around to absorb the water to clean out the test tube. And that's all we need you to do. And then you can just let it uh, like that for a minute. And while you put everything else back, please make sure you take the funnel off and put the cup back on top to seal that up. Put your weigh boat back. 
And then the last thing I'd like you to do before you're done is flip the test tube back over so it's ready for the next group to experiment. All right, good luck. Get her done.